Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the Silent Bar. If anybody sitting at the bar asks you why they call it the Silent Bar, the answer is because the X is silent. Silent X Bar. Silent Bar. I don't know, we're workshopping names around here. I still don't have a good name. Welcome back to the cocktail hour. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I didn't give you a chance to answer there. I'm gonna try that again. <clears throat> How are you doing today? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah? Uh -huh. Wow, that's awesome. Oh, but that's a shame. Well, you know, we all have our bad days. Good days, bad days, all days in between. In any case, let me get you a drink. Is how the conversation would go if I were talking to a patron sitting right across my bar. And if they were, this is how the, this is how the camera would look. Because if you're sitting across from my bar, it's very, very small. All we'd see at the back of my head. I wonder if that readjusted my camera. Who knows, even. I hope everybody's doing well. For realsies, though, if you're not doing well, it's okay. This, this is just one night out of all the nights in the world, or one morning, or one day. Anna's motioning Posture to me. Check. Posture check, she says. She's going off to the store to go grab juice or something like that. I want lemonade. She's getting lemonade. She's getting lemonade. She's going to get that. And bread. Oh, bread would be good. I run out of my toast in the morning. Usually what I would do is I would have toast, i toast that toast, two slices, slap some peanut butter on there, and that would be my breakfast, but we've been out of bread, and I am so lazy, so I haven't gone to the store to pick up bread. I've just been waiting for somebody else to go to the store, or for me to go to the store for something else, and then happen to pick up bread while I'm there, but the last time I was at the store, I actually forgot to get bread. Anna's wondering where her watch is. I'm not sure. I don't know. Oh yeah, the watch is, watch is back in. Pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. I had to use her watch before to ping her phone, which was hidden somewhere in the couch. It was like making sounds out of nowhere. It's just, things get lost in this apartment. Yo, speaking of apartments, Anna and I officially today got our executed lease for the next apartment that we'll be moving, be moving into. The bar, as you know it, will disappear in like two, August. two, three months or so. I don't know, we move it in August, so things will get figured out then. I now have the esteemed opportunity to be able to figure out the logistics of turning utilities off here, turning on utilities over there, trying to get the internet situation under control, switching from Comcast to Verizon, because we don't want Comcast in their stupid copper, we want fiber in their Verizon. Switch those words around. So much logistics that I now have to figure out now, and that's just, you know, adding on to the other things that I wound up keeping my life occupied with, but you know what, that's okay. That's why we sit down, we relax, we have a drink every once in a while. Speaking of which, Let's get right into the drink for today. I was looking for a particular flavor that I wanted to use from my particular collection of cocktail libations in bottles, and the flavor that I settled upon was I wanted to use passion fruit. And so I couldn't necessarily figure, I didn't exactly know what I wanted to mix the passion fruit with, so I decided to query. I was like, hey, work friends, what's your favorite, what's your favorite, like, flavor that goes in a drink? And they were like, I like mojitos, I think mint is a cool thing, and I was like, sweet, let's see if we can put passion fruit and mint together, and lo and behold, apparently, passion fruit and mint go together, it's called a passion fruit mojito, we'll get there, but also in addition to that, as I did a little bit of research, passion fruit and peach are apparently complementary flavors, and by complementary flavors, imagine complementary colors. You've probably seen a color wheel before, and the complementary colors are the ones that are on the opposite sides of each other, so you got... I think the opposite of purple is yellow, opposite of red is green, and opposite blue is yellow. The only one that's left, I'm pretty sure. Um, but apparently flavors have compliments to them as well. And, or, and I don't know if it's like supposed to be opposites, like on a color, color wheel. Perhaps it's more akin to like, they just taste good together. Well, passion fruit and peach supposedly taste great together. So I was thinking, all right, what if you take the passion fruit, the peach, and the mint, and slap it all together? And that's what we're making today, a passion fruit peach mojito. Based off of the recipe that I found for a mojito on the internet, I don't know, I don't think I need to give any credits here. Mojitos are a well-established thing. I think the only thing that I did differently because I saw it on a website was to add honey si simple syrup, uh, which I had the esteemed opportunity to be, I don't know why I keep saying esteemed opportunity. I made honey syrup before the stream started. It was very simple to make. You just mix honey and water together, put it in the stove, bottle it up, and Bob is your uncle or maybe Joe's your uncle, I don't really know. My uncle's name is Steven, but you got honey syrup. And so supposedly you kind of swap that out with whatever syrup you usually put in a mojito. I don't exactly know what that is off the top of my head. It's probably just simple syrup. And it supposedly adds another whole layer of complexity and yumminess to the mojito that you know and love, or perhaps don't know and love. Maybe you don't know about it. Maybe you do know it, but you actually hate it. In which case, well, maybe that'll fix that for you. In any case, the passion fruit mojito starts off with a cocktail shaker 
um, to which we muddle in about 10 mint leaves. Um, so I'm gonna do that. I think actually what I'm gonna do instead, um, I don't remember. Uh, I found it on a, uh, I was just trying to use my memory of how to make mojitos from like a cocktail bartending class thing I had a while ago. I'm gonna muddle them in my glass. So I guess actually, let me wait. Let me wait till the end for that. I'm gonna try not to remember. I'm not gonna try not to forget to muddle mint leaves in my glass, which will be what we do after we actually create the cocktail itself. I actually have some menthol man is not doing very well right now. Menthol man is coming back to life, uh, 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 luckily enough for us. But you know, I just gotta I gotta let menthol man sit in the window. I'm not gonna take menthol man over here to the behind the bar anymore because. They're recovering. They're recovering. Um, and they got mint leaves! So I managed to pick some mint leaves and some mint stalks as well. So I'm gonna leave this on top of my cocktail glass and hopefully not forget to muddle them on the inside. So I guess, dial back a little bit. Step number one, I guess, if that's step, that's step number zero. Step number zero, muddle some mint leaves into your cocktail glass, but feel free to put step number zero wherever you want to. It really doesn't matter to me. But step number one, one, is going to be putting some rum into a cocktail shaker. So let me get my cocktail shaker, put those on there, grab some ice, put them into my cocktail shaker themselves, and we'll figure out what happens there, because honestly, I don't know if I can remember what comes next. One big ice cube in my glass. Let's do a couple of tiny ice cubes also in my glass. No, just kidding, not in my glass this time. I can put them on my table. There we go. Just kidding, into the cocktail shaker. It's the way things have always been. It's the way things will always remain to be, unless somebody tells me otherwise and teaches me something new. It's all about learning around here. The first ingredient we need is one ounce or about 30 milliliters of passion fruit rum. Now, usually, for what I've been told, is that you would usually put about two ounces of a white rum into your regular mojitos. So I figured if we split the difference between the regular white rum and passion fruit slash peach flavor, then the idea would be to split it evenly between the passion fruit and the peach. The peach will come afterwards, but for now, let's get the passion fruit. This passion fruit rum is by Don Q. It is exceptional Puerto Rican rum with natural passion fruit flavors. I don't think I've ever actually used this on the show before, but it was actually a gift to me from my roommate's girlfriend once, a, once upon a time a little while ago. I think her family is from Puerto Rico and she went there one time and was like, yo, I know you're into cocktails. Do you want me to pick up uh, any spirits for you? And I was like, what's something you can get only in Puerto Rico? Or uh, that might not have been my actual query, but either way, she brought back this passion fruit rum and this mint rum. This mint rum is just called mojito. Uh, I think you just mix it with some, it says on the back, mix with club soda and enjoy. So there's your, you know, the easy man, easy man's mojito would just be add a little bit of this plus some club soda. And then the recipe on the back of this actually doesn't have one. Interesting. The Don Q Passion, passion fruit rum, doesn't have any recipes on the back. So that's why we're making our own. So enough talk from me. Let's put some liquor in a can. One ounce or 30 milliliters of passion fruit rum, or I suppose any other flavor. Technically speaking, if you wanted to make any other type of mojito, if you wanted to follow this particular formula, then the only thing that you would need to do is swap out the flavoring, the flavored, the unflavored components with flavored components. Essentially, all I did was substitute a base rum with a more complex rum um, and another flavor, which could either be schnapps or vodka, depending on what we actually decide on. Um, and that's really all I could do. I'm curious now that I think about it, there's a lot of different cocktail like recipes out there that are basically just formulas at their core. Like I believe a Negroni is just a recipe. It's like a formula. And I don't remember exactly what that formula is, but the idea of like, like for your gin and your Campari and your vermouth, you just sub those out with other things that fit into those categories. I believe instead of gin, you just have to use like some other base spirit, I think. This might be not be the formula, I'm just kind of speaking off the top of my head. In place of the Campari, you just put in a different type of bitter, sweet liqueur type thing. It could be any Amaro out there that you can swap out with your Campari. And for vermouth, you can switch it out with some other like fortified wine or something else that has those like, I don't know, other bits of the formula that I'm probably misquoting here. But like technically speaking, you could follow, if, if what I say about the Negroni formula is correct, you could get another Negroni by mixing in, let's say, 
I don't know what's another herbal liqueur out there. I don't know. I'm just gonna go off the top of my head. You could put tequila together with. I have Vigo Amaro is the Amaro that I have up there. I don't see anything else that's nice and bitter up there. And oh, what's in place of vermouth? Sherry. Let's go sherry. I don't know. Maybe that's considered a Negroni in some places. Perhaps in places of the academics who tend to follow formulas. I know I was a graduate of academia once upon a time, and honestly, I loved the formulas. Formulas made things easy. If you knew the formulas, and only if the formulas didn't have any more than like five or six like Greek symbols in them. Beyond that point, it's a little complex. And not even just Greek symbols. It could be letters, numbers, combinations of, the, the, of them all together, or various different scripts that I can't even recognize. Although I do know all the Greek letters now, although I'm not exactly familiar with what they look like in lowercase. I'm only really familiar with what they look like in uppercase because that's how I learned the Greek alphabet when I joined my fraternity a while ago. So many Greek letters. In any case, speaking of Greek, it's all Greek to me. This is a bad segue. When well, the next ingredient that we need is one ounce of your choice of peach liqueur. So in my collection, I happen to have peach schnapps, which is like the peach that everybody knows and love. But I also have this peach svedka, which is peach flavored vodka. And so the reason why I got the both of these is because Guys, really? Anyway, Anna's really, really into peach. Peach is, I think, one of her favorite flavors. And so when I was trying to figure out like how, what kind of drink that I can make for Anna, the idea was I would get something peachy. And so this happened to be like the peach liqueur that I could find at the time. I don't know why I didn't just go with peach schnapps, but that's just what I had. And so I'm trying to decide whether to use the peach vodka, peach flavored vodka by Svedka, all natural, distilled five times, five, or peach schnapps, which is by Faber. Made in Pennsylvania. It's a local peach schnapps, it seems. All natural ingredients, gluten-free. Oh, sweet! I love gluten-free schnapps, which I think most of them are. I know, but I, I went to, I think, I don't know if, I remember walking up to the stand and somebody was like, yo, we're selling gluten-free vodka. I was like, isn't all vodka gluten-free? And they're like, mm, well, some of it is. I don't know. I don't remember exactly what has gluten in it or not. I don't know what the rules are. I don't have to be too super duper careful on that. Um, but I don't know which one to use actually so I being that I'm kind of just kind of playing around with this I'm gonna take a cordial glass that I got over here. And I'm gonna pour both into I'm gonna pour one in taste it pour another one in there and see which one to me tastes more peachy for this particular application um, I'm gonna put the this bottle down here. It seems that the auto adjustment on the camera over here is making this look very 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 washed out and me look very very shadowy let's try this one first just so i can get it off, ca off camera a little quicker peach all natural svedka let's see how that tastes i'm not going to do an entire shot of it but we'll do like half this little cordial glass i think it contains a shot how many ounces do you have in here let's see if i if i take what i just poured and put it into my measuring jigger we'll see that it is about a little less than half an ounce so yeah this fits about an ounce ounce of spirit in it it smells it smells like peach it smells like peach not like not like um not like a peach that you would pick from a peach garden or a peach tree but more like peach like uh like the way that you would imagine peach candies to taste and it tastes like it's very sweet that's very sweet it's got a it's got a bite to it um it's a lot more burn than it is flavor but the flavor is exactly how I thought it would be. It's like, uh, in terms of a confectionery peach. Like if you told me, if you made me bite into a peach and you made me bite into peach candy, I'd be like, these do not taste the same, but this tastes more like the peach candy. And so now I'm gonna see what the peach schnapps are like and see if I can get a better description of it by comparing the two together. Just a little bit to see which one is more fitting for this particular drink. I have an idea of what I want it to taste like. And let's see if I can help myself with that by trying both. This is the favor, peach schnapps. Smells like, it smells more peachy. It actually smells more akin to what an actual peach smells like than the other, the other peach one, the peach vodka. I like it, I think I like it better. It smells more sweet, but that, you know, that might be just remnants from the, the peach vodka in there. I probably should have used another glass, but it's okay. It's all going to the same place. So who really cares? Peach. Schnapps, Faber, see how that tastes. Mmm. Okay, that's, so there's a lot less burn there. Probably because one has 30% alcohol. Uh, one is 35, oh, one is 35 and one is like probably what? 15, maybe? 15. So one is half the, 
half the proof of the other. This one tastes, it's got, it's got a lot more than the peach vodka. The peach vodka kind of just tastes like vodka and peach, but this one here actually tastes a lot more complex than that. It's not just peach. There's something in, out, else in there that I can't quite describe. And I wouldn't say it's like peach pastry or like peach confectionery candy. It's like peach candy combined with like something else that was about the candy. Like it's almost as if, if this were peach candy, it was a gummy worm. If the other one were peach candy, it was one of those like, one of those small gummies, but they have like the, uh, I'm trying like the sugar pellets on the outside. I'm trying to describe this, but they look fuzzy. They look fuzzy and they look shiny and it's shaped like a peach. And if you put that in your mouth, it tastes like it's, it's gummy, but it's also got texture to it. This tastes like somebody told me that there was a peach flavored gummy worm out there and I just took a bite into it and like ripped it off. And that's, that's what that tastes like. It's got like that, um, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but like gummy worms or gummy candy has like this, call it the taste of the bag or something like that. There's a taste of the bag in that peach schnapps. And I like that, which makes me think that I think I'm gonna do the peach schnapps instead of the peach vodka, because the flavor that I'm trying to go for, for this particular passion fruit peach mojito is not spirit forward. It's trying to be a lot more fruity, a lot more appreciable. And that's what I hope to get out of that. So I'm gonna use the peach schnapps in place of that. I'm gonna put my little cordial glass down here safely. It's very small, I don't want it to break. On the bright side, I have three more of them. So after that whole rigmarole of attempting to figure out what type of schnapps or what type of peach that we want, we're gonna add one ounce or 30 milliliters of, we decided on it, peach schnapps to the cocktail shaker, uh, which is which already has passion fruit rum on the inside of it, which I think, I think it'll be better anyways. I think there's a lot more sweetness to this particular schnapps. Um, I believe if I'm correct in saying schnapps is just a general term for alcohol that is distilled from uh, fruits and whatnot. And to be honest, I love, I love the taste of schnapps. Schnapps are so good. I think I remember learning about that when I was at the liquor store one time and I was trying to find banana schnapps or banana, I was trying to find banana liqueur. And so I found the guy and the guy who was walking around the aisles and whatnot, I was like, sir, can you help me find banana liqueur? And he's like, I don't think we have any banana liqueur, but we have this 99 bananas thing and it's technically schnapps. And we were like, excuse me, what is a schnapps? And supposedly that's the term there. I don't know how that differs from, I guess schnapps is less alcoholic, probably more sugary than like brandy, which I believe also comes from fruit. And I'm sure there's a vast number of spirits out there as well that also are distilled from fruit. Fruit's got, wine is distilled from fruit, technically speaking, although it's not schnapps, it's not, it's not brandy, it's not, it's got something all on its own. So is vermouth, I don't know. In any case, oh, I can feel the peach vodka going straight to my head. I, it's, that's like, the peach vodka go, would go very well if you are trying to get the feeling of drunkness. Like, it's not like I've had a single ounce of liqueur so far. I'm definitely not drunk. However, it went straight to my head. I've got that like, ooh, I'm so warm. And it's not just because the apartment is probably 76 degrees because if I had the fan on, it would catch on the microphone. That would just be oh so unfortunate. Anyway, the next cocktail ingredient that we need is one ounce of lime juice. And lucky, lucky for me, I have limes. I have juice, a squeezer, a knife, and a cutting board, which although sounds complicated, is basically all you need for lime juice. So I'll take my cutting board out, I have my squeezer. I feel like I've gotten this process down a little bit and I just need to make sure I get a full ounce out of these things. So after learning the trick of the trade, I'm gonna take this lime and I'm gonna squeeze it between my hands to try to get all the juice cells popped and whatnot. It's actually already pretty squishy, which is shocking to me, but let's not, let's not worry about that for a little bit. Cut your lime in half, it's easy, it's simple, it's lime, and then squeeze it into um, whatever measuring majigger that you're using. I'm using this measuring majigger. It's called a jigger. That's that's what they call it. That's what they tell me it's called. So that's what I'm gonna call it. Let's try to see how many ounces we can get out of this or half ounces or milliliters or whatever. That was about quarter of an ounce. Pretty cool. Quarter of an ounce or just about seven and a half milliliters, I think, if I'm doing the conversions correctly. I hope I've been getting better on my conversions. It's, uh, I'm really trying to. I just know that there's a huge, huge population of the world who does not measure things in ounces, and so I would rather be able to have the proper reference for those who don't understand the other language that I'm speaking. The speak, the, the language of, God, I don't even know what the measuring unit is called anymore. I, I don't think it's standard. Is it standard? I don't remember if it's standard units or not. It's like, it's confusing. It's, it's dumb. I don't know why we have this. It's so much easier. Like I got, listen, I learned how to do math using the metric system. I learned about science and whatnot using the metric system. 
It's so easy to divide things into hundreds, hundreds and tens and whatnot. Base 10 is easy to work with, not base eight and or 12 and or all the other weird conversions that you need to know for the American kitchen. I don't know who decided on it. I don't know why we still use it, but alas, you know, fun fact if I'm correct about my history, which oftentimes I am not. Supposedly, one of the great catastrophic O-ring failures of a NASA rocket ship was caused by somebody doing math in standard and somebody doing math in decimal and not being able to get the, uh, the conversion right. And that led to uh, catastrophe. I think people died, unfortunately. Uh, and that's why we should just have one. I mean, that's one reason to argue for one system of measurement, which I'm all for. I'm biased towards metric. I think metric is easy. I like metric. Metric makes me happy, but not everybody feels the same way. And if you don't feel the same way, that's totally okay. Maybe you're in love with your fluid ounces. Maybe you're in love with your quartz and whatnot. I'm gonna stick to milliliters, deciliters, centiliters, and picomliters, because I think they sound cooler anyway. One ounce or 30 milliliters of lime juice and put all your dirty dishes and stuff away. You dirty, dirty bartender. It's okay. it's okay, I usually clean things up. The next ingredient we need in the cocktail shaker is gonna be two to three teaspoons or 10 to 15 milliliters of honey syrup. I made some honey syrup right before stream started. It's all nice and cooled down now. It's great. I put it in a little bottle that used to contain, I think peach sake or whatever. It's got a lovely color if it catches the light, which it does not, it's not catching the light. Well, it looks cool from my angle. Looks almost amber. It's beautiful looking. What a beautiful bottle. Who bought this bottle? It was me. Who put the liquid in the bottle? It was also me. Who's gonna pour it out from the bottle? Oh, it's me. It's me. So because it calls for two to three teaspoons, I'm not gonna measure with a teaspoon. I know that's about 10 to 15 milliliters. 15 milliliters is about a half an ounce. So let's just call it half an ounce of honey syrup, if you got it. The particular ratio that I went, you, last time I think I did a one to one ratio. This time what I tried to do was a three to one ratio, three honey, one part water. Um, I think I ran, I think I'm a little lower than that. It might be more like two and a half parts to one part water because I actually ran out of honey. I used all of the honey in uh, the honey container of mine. And I wish I had the, I don't actually have the bottle over here. Otherwise I would give credit to who made the honey, because I know it was a local honey. I will make sure to put credits and whatnot um, in the VOD description. And when this cocktail inevitably ends up on Instagram, there'll be proper tags and whatnot there as well. Gotta give credit where credit is due. It's all about respect. I actually really, really enjoy being able to put like um, all these recipes and whatnot on Instagram and whatnot. I, I really, I, I was never much of a social media user in my time. I was always very nervous about like putting things on the internet and whatnot. But eventually, you know, I started streaming over a year ago and now I feel a little less hesitant about putting things on the internet. Who knew? <laughs> hours and hours of my life, almost 600 hours of my life is now out there public view on the internet, which is such an interesting thing to think about. And yet it helps me in a way to think that if I don't remember something that happened during the stream, I can go back and I can check it out. I could go check out all of those. And oftentimes I do. Sometimes I think of things that happen during streams and I try to pinpoint what it is that I said because I have exactly what it is that I said and the people around me, which is actually pretty cool. A little bit creepy in a way, I guess, because I'm sure there's something out there, some automaton machine learning algorithm that can crawl through all 600 hours of my life in the blink of an eye. It can literally experience my life like a flash before, a flash before their eyes. Like supposedly what you see before you die. A machine could do that right now. And I don't know what they'd glean. They'd probably be like, yo, what's this white guy doing on the internet? I don't know, making cocktails, talking, and not stopping to talk. Boy needs, boy needs to calm down a little bit. Oh, I heard my, heard something click over here. My uh, surface is what I use to be able to look at chat and whatnot. And it is just kind of haphazardly hanging on the television. It's not a very advantageous position. It's rather pretentious if you think about it. Like all I need to do is poke it Real, like really hard and it would just fall down. But honestly, I'm okay with that because the Microsoft Surface Go, in my opinion, is a really shitty piece of hardware. Don't get me wrong, it has lasted me for years now, but it has barely any space, barely any processing power. Sometimes it crashes just by running Google Chrome. Actually, this Surface has crashed just watching my own stream to be able to make sure that I respond to chat things. I'd be able to do the channel report requests. It's crashed just for putting this on, which is, sad 
somebody asked me the other day, they were like, do you recommend the Surface Go? And I was like, mm. and they were like, do you recommend a Microsoft Surface? And I said, yeah, I recommend Microsoft Surfaces. Surfaces are great. They're like, oh sweet, because I just got a Surface Go. And I was like, ooh, not that one. That's the only one that I don't think I like. At some point in time, I really need to get myself a new like laptop computer because I do, I do, I need to be able to do this stuff on the go, man. But that costs money, and uh, although we have money, I spent it on a new apartment, so that's where all my cash went. Anyway, so the next ingredient that we're gonna add to this cocktail shaker is not a liquid ingredient at all. Instead, what it's gonna be is passion is frozen passion fruit or passion fruit pu puree. I got this let's see i got this from whole foods a very long time ago it's been sitting in the freezer so it's probably okay it is now basically de-thawing so if i don't use it now i'm never gonna use it because it's probably bad and horribly freezer burnt um but i remembered that i wanted to do a passion fruit thing so i'm gonna put pieces of the frozen passion fruit in here in the shaker and hopefully as i shake this thing around i'm gonna shake it pretty vigorously it'll kind of break all the pieces apart and get those flavors of the passion fruit in there. I actually have no idea what this tastes like. I bought this once at the store because I was like, if I don't buy this now, I'm never gonna buy it. I'm never gonna see it again. I have seen it multiple times. I was the fool. Um, and it's, oh goodness. Oh my God. Anna opening the door completely scared the shit out of me. Welcome back, dear. Would you like to smell passion fruit? Why, does it smell funny? Yeah, it smells good. It smells really good. You wanna smell this? It smells really good. Illuminating plant power. Passion fruit is a nutrient packed superstar that is found in the world's most beautiful and tropical areas. Once cut open, it is clear to see that the superfruit is illuminating plant powered goodness. A marketing guy wrote this. Rich in antioxidants, vitamin C, and a good source of potassium and vitamin A, our passion fruit is the perfect fruit to start your day. Energize before exercising or refresh after a workout. And they also have various recipes here for non alcoholic drinks. You know, why would they recommend starting off your morning with an alcoholic beverage with your favorite illuminating plant powerful passion fruit? I don't know. It's got antioxidants, vitamin C, vitamin A, and potassium, just like bananas. Oh, and 80 calories. If I if I eat one of the servings in the container, there's two and a half. So if I ate this entire bag of passion fruit, you would expect me to have just about 160 by 40, 200 calories added to my body. Anyway, it's, it's actually interesting. This this passion fruit is literally just like, I don't know. This is a block of passion fruit. I'm pretty sure passion fruits aren't this large, but this is my block of passion fruit. I'm not gonna use that big of one. I don't think I need that big of one, but I'm gonna use some of the smaller pieces. So let's take passion fruit puree. What's the measurements on this? I don't really know. If there's anything solid left over, it's getting strained out. So however much of this infuses with the drink. Oh my God, that is so sour. Whoa, whoa. Whoa! Oh my god, it's so sour! Oh my goodness! I was not expecting that to be sour! Thanks, Chuck and Ben! Which is apparently the people who wrote the message on the back of this. Chuck and Ben, you are great at m making your product sound awesome. Best before April 30th, 2023. So it's still good. Apparently, this passion fruit is really sour. So if my drink comes out sour, now I know exactly why. But it might be cool. Might be cool. I'm always into learning about new things and seeing what good things that we can come up with. So in my cocktail shaker, I have one ounce of passion fruit rum or 30 milliliters, uh, one ounce or 30 milliliters of peach vodka, as well as another ounce of lime juice. We also have about half an ounce of honey syrup in there and some passion fruit puree, which is slowly but surely deep thawing in my cocktail shaker, infusing, I suppose, with every other ingredient in there, which is a good thing indeed. We'll move. Put the rest of that in there and do some shakage. I'm gonna shake this really, really hard because I'm gonna try to break apart this passion fruit as much as I can. And then I'm actually looking forward to seeing what this is gonna taste like, interestingly enough. Let's get it, let's shake it. You done? Yeah, I think it needs more. It's sour, it's so it's sour. I got a clip, it's me making a face, it's sourness, it's awesome. Okay, so while that thing is screeching away, now that it's calmed down, I'm gonna get my cocktail glass, I'm gonna find my yoga blocks, where are my yoga blocks? Oh, I know I had yoga blocks, there's my yoga blocks, it was beneath Anna's jacket. All right, let's put it on top of there, let's get the proper angle, where's my glass, there's my glass. Hello glass, I'm gonna get that up here, try to zoom in. Should make things look pretty, pretty, pretty. Super pretty. It's 
Excuse me, it's what pretty is all about. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm gonna be refluxing here on camera. Disgusting. Alrighty then. My glass. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna muddle. Um, I'm guessing like a dozen mint leaves. I don't know. I have... Count the leaves. How many leaves are in there? One, two, all of them. Put all the mint leaves in there. There we go. And we're gonna muddle those. What does muddling mean? Well, muddling is what you do when you're displeased with what's at the bottom of your glass. So you're gonna beat the shit out of it by pressing it with what the grocery store called a garlic presser. This, what I found at the store, this is a muddler. This, this apparatus here is what I call a muddler and Whole Foods told me it's for squishing garlic. Well, it can be used to do pretty much anything. Uh, you can squish garlic, you can squish bugs, I suppose, although I don't know why you'd want to use it after that. Hopefully you clean it. Um, hmm. This smells amazing. I wish, I wish that I could share with you guys the smell that is on the bottom of this muddler here. Oh, it's like heaven. <laughs> my goodness, I love the smell of mint. Oh my goodness. I think the first time that I found out mint is actually something that you can grow. I went up to my mother and was like, yo, 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 I want to taste mint. I want to taste mint. I love chocolate chip mint. She's like, all right, go ahead, try it. She hands me a leaf and I bite of this thing. I'm just like, it tastes like grass. What is wrong with you? <laughs> it was a very funny moment from my childhood. Um, and then I learned that, lo and behold, if you bite something that looks like a leaf, it's probably going to taste like a leaf, at least in some regard. But now that I've gotten older, and I've refined my taste buds a little bit, I get to sit through and realize that there's so much more to the flavors that I experience from the leaves of the world than I originally anticipated, because the world is so much more complex than that. Or rather, that's what I tell myself because I'm an adult and I'm trying to look for the meaning in life and still haven't found it yet, but then again, I am still young. I have the rest of my life to not figure it out and be completely unsatisfied on the other end. Right? Right? Is that what growing up is all about? Anyway, let's strain this out into the cocktail glass. And the next thing we're gonna do after we fill out just enough of it is... Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Hold on. I'm gonna do it at the same time. What they also recommend you to do is to fill it up with a little bit of club soda. Yeah, now it's on the now it's on the camera. Yeah, club soda. I bought mine from Whole Foods. That's what I have. Let's crack it open. Oh, what a satisfying sound. I'm just gonna kind of strain this in there because uh, I don't know exactly how much is in the container. So I'll strain until I feel like I should top off with club soda. I'm thinking about half-ish way. Half-ish way. Half-ish way. Now let's do like equal parts as I fill my way up a little bit smaller. There. I'm satisfied with that. That looks awesome. What a, what a dazzling color. Oh my goodness, and it has bubbles. I love bubbles. How much is left in here? There's still quite a bit in there. Might be room for seconds. Oh my goodness. I love this. One of my favorite parts about making these cocktails is the way that they look at the very end. I'm constantly surprised about how cool this stuff looks. Like, if I went to bars more often, I'm sure I'd be like, oh my goodness gracious, it's so tasty looking. It is tasty looking, um, and I'm at my own bar, so look at that. So I'm gonna put a straw on there. I'm gonna just back up a little bit so we get a full view of this thing. Beautiful looking. And I'm also gonna garnish with a couple more mint sprigs that I pulled from Menthol Man. Menthol Man is currently struggling to survive, but for the sake of the Instagram post and my own personal opinion of my own content, um, stocks had to die today, and I can't get one of these stocks. In. Come on, get, get in that. Get in. There we go. Luckily, the only person who's imbibing this drink is me, because because otherwise my grubby hands would be all over it. And I promised I washed before that. You don't serve drinks to people, especially yourself, unless you wash your hands first. And I most definitely wash my hands first. Why wouldn't I? Anyway, oh excuse me, I feel a sneeze coming on. All right, I tricked myself. Just kidding. No sneeze. False alarm. False positives, everyone. My apologies. All right, cool. Well, oh, and I forgot to take my photo. I'll put the. Yoga blocks away. Can't forget my photo. The photo. Photo. Whoa. Photo stands for firmware over the air update, and apparently I can't get work out of my head, so <laughs> one of my coworkers said they had a dream about work the other day, and I was like, I'm glad that I'm not the only one. I am not the only one. In a good way, in a good way. It wasn't a nightmare, it was a dream. I'll make that clear. So let me take my obligatory. Oh wait, 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 wait. I almost forgot to put in the pink umbrella. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay, hold on. Need to under the umbrella. Here, we're gonna watch. We're gonna watch. Wow. Wow. Gonna, a little bit, a little bit. Why these things have to be so hard? Oh, I wasn't even on camera. Jesus. Oh no! 
that's okay. This is this is okay now. Isn't that beautiful? All right, now, now. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> it's beautiful. What a beautiful cocktail. Please, please readjust camera. Yeah, I'm sorry for exposing you all to that. It just, it had to be the case. I wanted to give instruction. So I gave instruction. I prioritized instruction over beauty. I did it again. Sorry, everybody. So I think being that it's topped off with club soda, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to agitate it a little bit. I'm just going to spin around just a tad bit. Um, put my mint leaves back in there. Please, please go back in. Please, please. Thank you so much. Put that there. It's a mess. It's a mess. But who's not at least a little bit of a mess on the inside? Excuse me, I might take my little Instagram photo. That's what I do. That's so pretty looking. Oh, I'm going to get Pikachu in the background. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about Pikachu, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Hold on. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is Chonka Chip. This is my, this is a little piggy bank that I bought at a thrift store a while ago. I bought it. Oh, Anna bought it. Excuse me. This is Chonka Chew. It's the chonkiest chew. And it it's electric. Boogie, boogie, boogie. I love Chonka Chew. Anyway, Chonka Chew used to sit behind my camera when I had the previous camera. Now I have a new camera. So Chonka Chew sits behind the camera a little bit, but it's over on my little uh, components cabinet. There's a bunch of resistors and transistors and blah, 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 whatever's in there. Sciencey shit. Um... It's great. It's awesome. It's lovely. You're lovely, but is this drink lovely? Let's find out. Passion fruit, peach, mojito. Let's see if it's a little... Let's see what is max. It could be prominently passion fruit, which I imagine it is. That passion fruit puree was very, very sour. Or maybe it's prominently peach or prominently mint mojito. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that is very tasty. All right. It is very, very, very prominently passion fruit. I think I put way too much puree in here. However, not as much puree that I can't piece things out a little bit. There is some sourness there. The sourness is most definitely from the passion fruit puree. I was completely blown away by how sour that thing was when it came out of the bag. And I want to believe that I can taste the lime juice in there, but I'm going to be honest. I really can't. I think if I would have expected the passion fruit to be as sour as it was, I probably would have just taken out the lime juice to begin with if you have pet the uh, sour passion fruit puree, puree and you make this for yourself you don't need the lime juice i don't think you need it at all so i guess you can do yourself the extra favor with that spare ounce there you could probably add a little bit more rum there if you want to add a little bit more mint whatever you have as mint in there to be fair as well there isn't anything prominently mint in here aside from the mint leaves which mostly gives it a minty smell but it's also very passion fruity there as well i would think that would probably be beneficial if you have something this like if you're trying to pair something this prominently passion fruit powerful with mint you should probably add a little minty bits in there too some like creme de menthe or if you have infused puerto rican rum with natural mint you could probably use that as well and now that i think about it that might be a good addition here but let's see nah that's not mint enough for me that's that's a lot more there's something other than mint in there. It's almost woody. It, it smells more like rum than it does like mint, and I don't think it would do it for me for this drink. But I wanted to have it out anyway because this is the other bottle that came from Puerto Rico from a very, very good friend of mine. But it's pleasant. I'd say it's very, very pleasant. So, super fashion fruity. Basically, what it tastes like is it tastes as if somebody decided to take club soda and mix it with passion fruit juice. It just tastes like that. It's more like a, it's a spritz, and it tastes really, really good. It's a little sour. For my taste i like things a little more sweet so you know apparently I, if i like things more sweet i could just add some more simple syrup so i think from my particular taste buds i'm gonna add a little more honey syrup and you know actually come to think of it before i even add the honey syrup what the flavor that lingers on my tongue is honey like and i just noticed that now so it does have a bit of an evolution to it it's not all passion fruit all the time but we can't just be all passion all the time can't just be all fruit all the time. We have to diversify ourselves. Make sure that the different facets of our personality are properly represented in our daily lives so that people don't think that we're plain or simple. I'm not plain and simple. I'm just a dude. Or maybe I am plain and simple. Simple and clean is the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. That was very good. So now, with a little bit more sweetness, it balances out the sourness, and I get the effervescence a bit more. I get the bubbles, the bubbles of the club soda. Just, oh, that's really doing it for me right now. 
Oh, I really like those club soda bubbles. I don't usually make things with club soda very much. No wonder. Oh, I gotta do that more often. In any case, it's delightful. It's delively. That's the show thing. It's delight. It's it's delicious. It's delightful. It's delovely. That might have been dove chocolate or something like that. I don't know, dude. I haven't watched a lot of TV in a while. But it's great, and I like it. So this is the passion fruit peach mojito. Well, I just reminded myself that it's got peach in it, but to be perfectly honest, it doesn't taste much like peach. What if I balance it out more? Let's add a little bit more peach. I wanted to try to get some peach in there, but I got no peach, mostly because the passion fruit is completely overtaking. Let's add a little bit more peach schnapps. I make these things up on the fly. It's not, it's not like I prepared this beforehand. It's as much an exploration for me as I hopefully believe that it is for everybody else. If I add a few more peach schnapps there, hopefully the peach comes back a little bit. And if that is the case, so usually if I have to drastically modify the recipe like this, what I post will be the actual, the, what comes out the other end that I particularly like. Umbrella, please. Umbrella, please. Well, if there is peach in there, can't really find it. I guess there is a little bit of the peach in this. So the, the part of the peach that I taste now is the skin. It's the skin of the peach. Like you kind of, you bite into the skin of the peach and it's a little tanniny, it's a little dry, it's a little sandpapery on your tongue. I taste that now. And I didn't realize that that flavor was present in the peach schnapps, but when combined with everything else, or maybe I'm just psyching myself out. This could all just be some crazy mind games brought about by alcohol swirling through my brain and intercepting my neuroreceptors which is totally valid. I mean, that's what happens when you drink. When you drink, you get buzzed. When you buzz and drink, you get drunk. When you get drunk and drink a little bit more, you fall back down, you wake up, and you start all over again, which is not very healthy. I would not recommend that. It's technically, a hangover cure is just to drink through the hangover, but that is a feedback loop that I don't think you want to get involved in. I don't want to get involved in it, but then again, I'm not your parents, but certainly not. So I am totally not in support of bad drinking habits. However, if you're drinking at least classily, it's one step in the right direction at the very least. Well, thank you everybody so much for coming behind the bar and exploring this with me. It was, it's pleasant. It's pleasant, it's sour, it's passion fruit. And um, if I can figure out more P alliteration to put into the title of this video, I wish I could, and eventually I will. It's all about alliteration. It's all about word games. It's all about being able to speak on your feet, improvisation activities. That's pretty much all that happens here. It's just improv. There's no script. No, there's no nothing. <laughs> and the points don't matter. Points also starts with the letter P. This episode has been brought to you by the letter P for punctual, for pornography, for percolation. And um, I'm sure there's some disturbing combination of those three things. And come to think of it, P stands for party. And the party will continue. However, this part of the party, the cocktail hour, is now over. But thank you all so much for coming. I appreciate your presence. More P sounds. I hope that's doing it for you. I'm gonna switch over to the other side of my bar, which is my desk, and I'm gonna play some Hollow Knight this evening. If that's something that you're into, which I hope you are, then please stick around for the parrots that are partying and dancing on away that will be coming in a little bit. But if that's not the case for you, and that's totally all right. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening or afternoon or morning or dawn or dusk or twilight. And if there's an eclipse happening near you, because I missed the one that happened here the other day, that's so cool. Eclipses are awesome. And whatever time of the day that they occur is time enough of day to party for you. So thank you everybody so much for watching. I will see y'all on the other side or next time or next evening or next Wednesday or whenever our eyes make contact again. But that's up to you, my friend, fellow viewer. I love you. Or maybe not. Anyway, bye bye everyone. See you on the other side. Well, I like you. I think you're cool. Mask maker. Mask maker, mask maker, make me a mask. Find me a face. Make it full of class. Mask maker, mask maker, make me a mask so I can hide my face.